Great. Hey there, everyone out there. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Lynn Capsuloris, and I'm with Lori Carpinos and uh, Carpinos, I should say. And uh, we are here with a small group. And today our topic is going to be dating and mating. And we are going to just have a conversation around this. And you'll begin to see how this unfolds because the purpose really of this video is just to help you gain some insights as you sit here and listen from a relaxed mind, insights into relationships, how different people think differently and how we're really in a relationship with our thinking, though it looks like our feelings are coming from our partner. So that's really what we're going to talk about today. So Lori, welcome. Uh, it's your show. You. Take the floor. This is my favorite topic, right? <laughs> well, as I said, my favorite topic is love. And, um, but especially for single people, because I've had a lot of experience as a single person <laughs> and a lot of experience um, dating and meeting men through the years. And, uh, you know, I feel like I've learned something from everyone, not the way you would typically think of learning something. Although, yeah, you know, there have been men who have helped me with my um, uh, computer questions and, you know, um, uh, work, you know, sorts of questions, uh, career sorts of things. But I mean learning at a deeper level. I know that you know what I mean, Lynn. Oh, yes. Learning how the human mind works. Not that I'm sitting there with a telescope or, you know, an x-ray machine, and you couldn't do that anyway because the mind is invisible. The mind is not That's right. That's right. So Lynn and I um, had the same teacher and also students of him. We've had a lot of teachers about the mind, how the mind works for everybody. Yes. So to me, that was so comforting to recognize that everyone I meet up with is getting an experience of their own thinking. That to me was so powerful. And to this day, it's powerful. It's the kind of learning that never stops. Or people have called it the gift that keeps on giving. So why don't you say a little bit about your experience with this knowledge? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just pointing out, like, Lori, you're mentioning the mind. Many people uh, sometimes think the mind is the brain, but, you know, the brain is separate. The brain is obviously physical part of the physical body. And, and what I know you're referring to is, uh, I'll call it the spiritual mind. I always say spiritual because spiritual means it's invisible. You can't see it or taste it or touch it, but it overrides in, in my opinion, I'm sure there's no scientific data, but in my opinion, in my own experience, it overrides your programs in the brain. And the mind is the uh, power really behind our life experiences. But so, you know, for me specifically, Lori, seeing that on a deeper level that my experiences of life weren't coming from a person the ex-spouse, uh, a, a difficult person, I'll even say, the job, I always felt not good enough. I always speak of that. And I accepted it as real because I thought it was coming from whatever I attributed it to. So when I began to see that, oh my gosh, none of that is, is true. It's just that I use thought like everybody else does to experience life. And uh, I began to move away from who I thought I was as I gave up, you know, going into stories and waking up when I felt like I was, you know, in these lower moods. But um, I just began to see a whole new world beyond who I thought I was. 
And that's when everything opened up for me. And um, here's the thing. There's nothing I needed to change, but just to see on a deeper level how I work along with everybody else who ever walked planet Earth. Why do we have low moods? Why do we have high moods? Why do we have insecure feelings? You know, the nuances, why do we feel good sometimes for no reason? And, and all of that, what Lori and I are talking about here to our audience, that's what we explain. That's what we help point people within on how they already work as opposed to how you thought you worked. But uh, what we really point people to is what's already true. And uh, once I really began to see that on a deep level, um, it's, it's just a game changer. And it gets carried over in your relationship with yourself and your relationship with other people. You know, because I began to see people differently because I didn't have a lot of judgment or criticism on my, or, you know, criticizing them. So when you're talking or looking at someone without all this noise on your mind, the mind gets quiet because that's what it does. And then you fall back into your quiet zone, your peace of mind. And having a relationship with someone at that peace of mind space is a game changer because you're connecting on a level that's beyond your thinking. You know, you still have thinking going on, but you just don't pay attention to it. So my experience has been once I began to really see how we all work, like you're saying, it's true for everyone. That is where uh, you live more from your power, so to speak. You know, we all fall into the human condition of thinking, but it's always a choice on um, how you feel, how you're treating people. And um, it's just been a great experience. And we love sharing this with people, that's for sure, especially in the dating community. Yeah, you know what I love yeah. about it, Lynn, is that it really gives us such a great understanding of what other people yes. are going through because most people are experiencing what they think is causing their feelings. Yes. Yes. They don't know that their feelings can only come from their own mind. Yes, yes. So it, you know, when I work with couples as a marriage and family therapist and relationship coach, it alleviates the, even the desire to argue. Yes. As people pick up on the fact that they can't blame anybody for thinking the way they're thinking. Yes. And then they get really curious and intrigued and, in, and interested in how the other person is thinking. You know, before I knew this, when I would go on dates years ago, I would be, like you said, in a, a place of judgment. They would say something and it wouldn't match my reality, how I saw things. So I had to... Um, I just had to let somebody in who was um, <laughs> the, so I lost my train of thought for a minute who was in the waiting room for us. But um, I'll just backtrack a little bit. So before I understood this, I would go on dates with a, a mind of expectation and a mind of disappointment because my expectations wouldn't be met. And I'd experience um, my own judgment. So the person was never matching up to what I had hoped for in my mind. And this looked like absolute reality to me. Until I started to learn what you and I share in all the programs we do and, you know, different topics, but it always comes back to the fact that we are always, every, being on the planet is always experiencing their own thinking. Yeah. Woo! I mean, 
<laughs> I know. It, it just really, it like flips life upside down when yeah. you see this. And yes. I, you know, like I know you or ex experience the same thing that we just see it deeper and deeper and deeper. Yes. yes. The first course I was in about this, I, I thought, oh, I got it. But I didn't realize that was just the tip of the iceberg. When, when you feel like you got it, you, or, you know, you're still up here getting it intellectually, but as you go about life through the days, weeks, years, months, years, you see it play out always. Oh, it, it never, there are no exceptions. Right. It never does not play out that a person is experiencing their own thinking. And I, you know, I used to get offended by what people would say or do in response to me. That never happens ever anymore because I, I've gotten to the point and that's what we, why we share this. We want everybody to get to this point where you, you realize nothing can be offensive because it's always coming from their thinking and their thinking has to do with the moment, right? Yes. Like our, the quality of our thinking, which is moods, yes, rise and fall throughout the day. And in a low mood, I'm just as apt to say something if I don't catch it, yeah. that would come off as being offensive. That recently happened, in fact, I'll just tell this story briefly, that I realized after the fact, this man who I was very interested in, but I, I realized that I, because of other experiences I've had where people were not quite who they said they were, <laughs> saying it mildly, so I became really, um, you know, like the dating police. Like, let me check this person out, you know, and I think I, I mentioned like, well, why don't you Google me? Yeah. And he thought in his mind, that was the most unromantic thing in the world to Google somebody. And I'm, you know, I have like such a different experience, but I'm not going to judge him because I know that that's his thinking. Not what I would, you know, what I would buy into for myself. So then I, I knew because of his thinking being so different, yeah. that I offended him and I asked and he said, yes, that's, that affected me. I mean, there was a little more to it, but you know, just to give you the gist of the conversation. And so I was able to explain, I said, well, you know, I, I didn't mean to offend you. That just came from my own insecurity from my previous experiences. And we we got along really well after that. Isn't that interesting? Because, you know, it's so easy to be vulnerable and yeah. because, you know, it's human. We're just being human. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, when you were talking, Lori, what occurred to me is you know, talking about not taking things personally and know that nobody could really make us feel anything, really. No one can pour feelings into us. It's a different way of life. It's a different way of living. And the thing is, I didn't have to say affirmations. I didn't have to uh, install new beliefs. I didn't have to do anything and neither have, have you. It just automatically your behavior changes for the better. And, you know, you catch yourself if you find yourself reacting. And if you do, you know, it occurs to you when your mind simmers down to maybe apologize or whatever. It, uh, it's just a different, it's a different way of living. And uh, like for me, I spend more time in peace of mind because of this which means now my mind isn't so cluttered, it's more open. So the bandwidth literally increases. And that's why people become, uh, you know, more creative, they're more compassionate, they have more gratitude, they're more forgiving, they're more loving, because they're not always up in their, their head of stories. But when you really see that it's true for everyone, 
it's really hard to blame people or take things personally, like you're saying, because really they're just in their thinking and innocently, they have no idea they're even a thinker who creates their momentarily, moment to moment experience. No idea, like I never did. But boy, when you wake up to the truth of that, everything from the obviously the inside out changes. You just the, the way of life is uh, is very different. It's so hard to even wrap, even find the words to say how different it really is. But you just don't live anything like any way that you did, lived before. Life feels easier, you know. And you don't wait to live. I used to wait to live you know, wait for this, wait for that. I always had a place I wanted to get to, you know, and you realize that the only way you're bumped out of the natural flow of life, which we call the present moment, is just by thinking too much. And when we notice it, we can come back in. That's the protection that this understanding gives you. You're always protected from going down paths that you you should be going down and that's the beauty of it yeah for yeah. sure so so true you know not taking things personally and the the mind is impersonal because it is the energy that everybody taps into yes. Yes. Every, so it can't be personal. Personal would right. be for the individual person. And when you're in that impersonal realm with another person, guess what? That is the best place to connect. Yeah. Because people think of impersonal. Gee, that doesn't sound very good. It doesn't sound very personal. But catch this. You know, if you can... If you can catch this, if you could see what we're pointing to, that when you're in that realm of not the per if not being in the personal, you're no longer Lynn, you're no longer Lori, you're no longer right. personality, you're no longer, you know, um, gee, this outfit doesn't fit as, as good as I wish it did, or, you know, I've got a bad hair day. You're not in that at all. There's nothing it on your mind about you yourself right right that's when we're all having the best time we're relaxed we're in the moment we're interested in the other person yeah. and that's the impersonal realm that's what we're shooting for to be there more often now of course you're gonna fix your hair you're gonna you know be in the most comfortable best looking clothes you can find for your date but after that, you don't have to think about it anymore. You've done, you've done the, yeah. the physical job. <laughs> now you're yeah. in the relaxed state of yeah. just having a nice time getting together with another human being and hearing how they think about things. And it's going to be different than how you think about things. Yeah. That used to scare me, you know, when people had a different viewpoint about um, anything, you know, politics, uh, social en endeavors. I mean, I, you know, you name it, social structures, religion, even all the things we, you know, you, you hear, oh, that's a taboo. You shouldn't talk about those things. But you know what, if you don't have any skin in the game, as far as right. They have to think the way you think. Right, right. You're just looking for a nice feeling. That's the ticket. Finding a nice feeling in yourself. And you can't help but have a good time. Yeah. You don't have to change them. You don't have to wish that they would be more this or more that it. There's no expectation whatsoever when you're just sitting across from somebody and you don't have, like you said, Lynn, a lot of noise on the on yeah. your mind. Like, you know, is this the one? Could this lead to something? Yeah. Don't care. Yes. Who cares about that? Literally. 
the less you care about when you, the more you're going to be in the moment enjoying yourself exactly and you know Lori, that's how you you said so many great things but that's how you know you're really connected to that person that you're speaking with you know i say connected but uh, on a level that listening is what i mean you're being heard they're listening to you versus going in there with a lot of judgment and that's what, unfortunately, like you're saying, a lot of people do when they go to meet somebody for the first time, there's a lot of judgment on their mind and there's no connection. You can't really listen, you can't hear. And uh, it turns out to be a very bad experience, even though maybe even when you're really connected on that deep level where you're not, both of you aren't in the noise, you still might have a great conversation and have rapport, but you're experience is just so much nicer versus um i shouldn't even say that you could still have a great experience but you still might not have a love connection so to speak you know what i mean you might know that even though you're enjoying a conversation free of noise you still might not feel a connection at, at that deeper level and that's okay but at least that's true versus trying to talk with somebody with judgment and noise for both of you how would you even know that you may ha have some type of connection if you're just judging each other. So it's it's so important to, I say important, but it's so true when you talk to someone and, and really listen and connect with them because when we always look, oh my gosh, am I attracting the same person as I did before? Where's this gonna go? I don't know if I like them. I don't know, what are they thinking about me? That's just a bunch of noise and that moves you further and further away from really getting to know that person because you're in you're in your thinking they're in their thinking and there's no common ground at all and of course the date isn't going to go well so it's um it's so crucial that especially you know for everyone but especially people really meeting people building rapport and connection with someone can't be done when there's noise on the mind it's just impossible. Yeah. Yeah. So should we open it up to see if there's any sure. questions? Sure. You can send us a question in the chat or you can send them or you can unmute yourself. Either way. Or maybe not. Trying to think of some questions that I've had in the past. You know, I think oftentimes people initially when they meet someone, Lori, they don't know how to make conversation. You know, um, I know we did some meetings uh, uh, a while back and people were saying, oh, my gosh, you know, how do I really uh, start off a conversation? How do I really talk to somebody? You know, yeah, and that's, uh, a that's a great one. That's a great one. You know, have you been on dates where and I've heard this from other people, not just my experience, where they talk, talk all the time. Oh, yeah. They do all the talking about themselves. And, you know, it tickles me. It doesn't bother me, but um, it does not draw me in you know it, it tickles yeah. me because it's like they're selling themselves mm -hmm. and we wouldn't have gotten to the date if i wasn't already interested in spending yeah. some time with them right so right right it just tickles me like you know but i think a lot of that too might be from nerves oh sure sure and, yeah yeah uh, insecurities insecurities you know that's okay. He doesn't know if he has any questions. That's okay. But you know, when, when we're not, um, you know, a lot of times you hear the word, okay, just be you. Go on your date, be you. But you can't really be you when you have uh, coming from a place of insecurities. You know, that makes it much more difficult and challenging. So when you're just you without lots of noise on your mind and 
worrying about you, then, you know, you fall back into that nice space of connection and rapport. Oh, how so, do I get on a date? Yeah. How do I get on a date? Well, so, I mean, my, I'll answer first and then you take a shot then, you know, I'll answer from my own experience and from the experience of people I've heard from. Actually, maybe I'll do it the other way around first. I'm thinking about friends in my circle. How did they meet their now partners, right? So one met because I brought my guy friend to a party and he and the woman throwing the party are now married. Oh, wow. Yeah. And another friend, um, she was like not interested in being a relationship. She had gotten out of a difficult one. And so she was going with friends of hers to hear live music. And uh, the photographer of the band, um, found a way to meet her through one of the friends she was with. He started talking to one of the friends she was with, but he really had an eye on her. And um, they're living together now. <laughs> wow. So, you know, it happens in so many unusual ways. I mean, I'm not really, I haven't had many experiences of meeting people in, real life for whatever reason i mean i'm usually pretty friendly but i just have not met a date in real life once at you whole won't. foods come to think of it <laughs> once i'm minding my own business at whole foods and this man uh, it was in the winter time and he uh came over to compliment me on the coat i was wearing and i thought that was really nice so i think we had one date <laughs> i don't think it oh, went wow. anywhere, if i recall that was a while back but another way is the most popular way, I think, is online dating services. Yeah. 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 And that's what, um, you know, in the chat box here that um, I don't like dating apps. You know, I'm not a dishwasher with features to look at and compare. And you know what, how true that really is. Unfortunately, uh, he's 100% on the money because these dating apps um, have really taken it below. Uh, so many levels, and uh, which is why you and I are creating a, what you want to say, maybe a dating app. If that's what we're, yeah, we're calling it that, but it's really a, a program. And um, we're taking people in who have higher levels of consciousness, who really want to meet someone, connect with someone without all the noise, without all the judgments, without all of their baggage, without wondering if, you know, they're repeating another mistake. Because the bottom line really is in order to truly date someone and, and have maybe a forever relationship, like that's really what, what ours is going to be, is help, helping people have their forever relationship. You have to have a better forever relationship with yourself first. So if you're insecure about yourself, if you, know, you find fault with yourself all the time, if you don't even love yourself forget having a relationship because it won't be of any quality you know and it's you're going to always going to find something wrong you're going to be offended so we really go back into the basics and, and teach people you know like what we always share on, on what's behind their experience and we teach them how they really work in a way and and they get a rise in a level of consciousness it's infinite and can you imagine that they are going to attract similar type of person with a higher level of consciousness. And that's where the game changing comes in because it's not nitpicky. There's no swiping. There's none of that. We don't match people on a personality or anything at all like that. We're taking it to a whole new level that's just not out in the marketplace. And I believe it's going to be very, very effective. Uh, I believe that uh, we're going to have some great matches out there. And I believe that um, when, when people really know who they really are beyond a personality or beyond 
any of that nonsense on who that who they identify themselves with there's a whole new world available to them that's unseen and uh they're going to have a different way of living life as well and uh my gosh talk about you know a forever match right very it's it's going to be where both people are at that um same type of level of consciousness similar right yes he's saying you're you're right so many people feel they have to be impressive when they put in their interests and if they really did all of those things on the list there would be no time to live <laughs> isn't that the truth so you know what he's absolutely right now you're now people again are feeling insecure so they're loading up with interests and trying to impress people well that's the worst uh they they've got insecurity issues and don't really realize it but that's very difficult to attract uh a quality level person that way i've seen some profiles where uh people you know have a sense of humor about that very thing and they'll list all these wonderful things like i love flying out of uh, um parachuting out of planes and climbing mount kilimanjaro <laughs> you know they go on and on and they and and you're hysterical by the time you get to the bottom you know and they're, they're kind of doing a um a little comedy routine on on that uh with with that crazy also find in the dating world you know and like lynn said when you realize that all of these mechanisms devices that people use to um get them to feel more secure because they don't realize that there's nothing yeah. they have to do to feel more secure they have to quiet their mind that's all <laughs> they got to quiet the noise down and then they see that they my gosh that the, they're not broken that they, they could have a broken leg but their spirit is never broken that's right they're not lacking they might have um a speech impediment or hearing loss like i do but it doesn't mean my spirit is lacking you know right. um they might you know yeah. need glasses for eyesight but it doesn't mean that their spirit is lacking <laughs> yeah that's right that's absolutely right um yeah, yeah. so that's yeah i mean i love that you know the saying that about building a better mouse trap the dating sites that are out there and i've certainly had my share of experience with them they're they're lacking in that you know people are at all different levels of consciousness and they're on there at different when they're in bad moods as well as great moods and they're trying to get with somebody who's in a bad mood and nobody knows how important it is to understand that to understand that the quality of the writing is coming from a certain level of consciousness a mood level at that and in that moment yeah i mean i've been ghosted by people who then uh, felt bad about it because they said i was just in a that they when they say i they were in a really bad mood when they did that and um you know they had my um text my cell phone number to text me so they were able to let me know that they didn't really mean to do that but they were in a really bad mood well you know people don't react like that when they have the understanding yeah. that Lynn and i share with yes. people it's not just Lynn and I sharing this understanding we, there are lots of other coaches and therapists sharing the three principles which is what we have all found immensely valuable just immensely valuable to to understand that yeah how, how we're all operating from the same force of mind thought and consciousness that's yeah. right and and you know what one other thing occurs to me too is that um many people go on these dating sites and they just come off of a long-term breakup or a long-term marriage and then they're out trying to meet someone you know that's one of the worst things you can really do right away so that's something that um 
you know, will help educate people on that as well. Oh, I like this question. I met at least six women online, but they were in chat rooms where there was overall socialization going on. And then you could see how they behave, oh. how they treat other people, whether they value, oh, interesting, helping people and their sense of humor, how open they actually are, rather than how they claim to be. Yes. Oh, I nice. love that. I like that. I think that's a great idea. Great idea. Great idea. We need to steal that one, Lori. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that. That is so true because then you can see how people really truly interact. And it's not as, uh, you know, maybe people don't feel as pressured because it might not, you know, just one-on-one. -on -one. But again, we won't, and our, what you and I are helping teach people that uh, pressure is only coming from how they're thinking about the situation or meeting someone, that it doesn't come from anyone. The pressure people feel is made up by themselves, is felt um, because how they're thinking. But um, I do like that um, a group of women online in chat rooms, I think that's great see people in action. You know what that reminded me of years ago, I was on a, a date, we we're at a restaurant and the, this was a successful lawyer. I was mortified the way he treated the wait staff. Oh yeah, that, that's another thing. Mortified. Yes. Like in fact, as we left, I, I, I mean, I, I went to the bathroom and I apologized to one in particular. It was so embarrassing. I can't begin to tell you. And I know that, uh, yeah, that was my judgment. But that was my judgment coupled with common sense and wisdom. Right, right. Knew that. So th that was a great question you just asked about or, or statement about seeing how people are in, you know, with the wait staff, with other people. If yeah, I agree. Line, yeah, it's another restaurant situation I had. Again, more to <laughs> This was a meeting date and there was a wait. Well, yeah, there was a wait because uh, they were just coming out of COVID, uh, allowing people to come into the restaurant. And he made a big stink about the wait. First of all, I, I don't even think we had a reservation to tell you the truth. So you got to, I mean, you, you have to just assume that there's going to be a wait. That was an opportunity for us to sit on the bench right, in the meeting right. area and get to know each other. So that was another, yeah. So that's a great point is seeing how people are out in yeah. that area. Yeah, absolutely paying attention to that. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's different than the judgment, like, you know, you don't like their shoes or um, they've got a funny haircut or, you know, that's, that's not going to affect the feeling between yeah. the two of you. But, you know, I, I still live on planet earth I may be a spiritual being, but it's going to be really hard for me to get a good feeling when yeah. the person I'm with is mistreating somebody. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. So how are we doing for time? Do we have time for any of that? Maybe one more question, if there's a question or last comments that you want to make. Mm -hmm. Well, I think overall, uh, all of even how people treat people in general, the wait staff or whoever they're interacting with, uh, the you know, understanding that you and I share takes care of that too. Yes. Uh, because again, you know, that's what's key about all of this. It's going to change uh, so much for that person. And you have a much better chance at a longer term relationship that is warm, caring, nurturing, and loving versus one that you're fighting all the time or at odds with each other or don't understand each other or that you don't feel heard. So that eliminates all of that, starting from the dating all the way up and it trickles into everyone's life. No, he's never in a relationship like that. See, absolutely. Yeah. I believe that. I believe that. 
so many of us, we, we haven't, we suffer and we put up with these relationships and they drain our energy. And um, because we're, we're not in a relationship with people who they're all insecure. People are insecure because they're living in the feeling of their thinking, but they're accepting it as truth. And, you know, we try to um, get along with someone, but uh, you're trying to get along with someone when they're, you know, and they're insecure thinking in these low moods, it's difficult. So what we're really teaching is life-changing, life-changing. Yeah, I mean, isn't it interesting that people respond so much better from a higher level of consciousness? Yes, through absolutely, the yes. Of how everybody absolutely. works from within themselves, from the inside out. That's right. People automatically jump higher levels of consciousness and they would just they they wouldn't think uh, they they wouldn't think of treating somebody poorly that's right that's right uh, it's not on their radar <laughs> yeah that's yeah, right because they, they they wouldn't be coming from their ego and there was another point i was going to make about that that um their tolerance yes increases as far as so there's a weight okay you know, no not the deal. end of the world. Right. Um, right. Let's let's make the most of it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, and those are the people you want to be matched with. You want to be that person, yes. and you also yes. want to be matched with somebody at that level. Who Absolutely. Sees. So that's why Lynn and I are building a better yeah. match. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. I can't <laughs> wait. Yeah, it really is. And we've got a team, two other people who are helping us. So it's very exciting. Oh yeah. How are you doing this? Well, we'll, we'll share the details after. Absolutely. Yeah. With you. As it unfolds. Yeah. We're just at the beginning of stage. Yeah, we're at the beginning, but it'll that. be out this year. It'll be out this year for sure. It's got a life yeah. of its own. Yeah. Uh, it's it's um, probably going to roll out faster than we think. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So all right well to be continued right we're just gonna um speak to whatever the interest is um of the group and that's how we'll run these programs sounds good yeah so thanks for joining us and uh we'll hope to see you soon great yeah. thanks everyone well there is no okay <laughs> oh, I know. Well, no, they don't know that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we're starting a, a dating site. We met with uh, the guy that helps us.